thank all the people who are watching online, mashaAllah immense amounts of support and sharing and comments and looking at all the comments. We try our best to read as, as much of these comments as possible, hundreds and hundreds of comments on each video, mashaAllah. Share the short videos, they're, they're uh, an, uh, easily absorbed appetizers. 60 seconds and boom send it here and there, it should be enough to hit like an arrow to the heart of people. 30 minutes they can't absorb but if uh, in 60 seconds you can hit their heart with a reality it may lead them to want more. So Allah bless all those whom sharing those, making their pages and, and putting them out on social media and, and putting them on, on different uh, types of platforms, alhamdulillah. And the, the khidmat with taking the, the, the items from Fatima Zara, posting them on social media. Every page and every item on Fatima Zara's site you can take the zakat, you take it and share it on social media the link so that the person opens up that actual button and goes straight into the charity site. So alhamdulillah the Nur Muhammad website with all the articles. So many ways for us to be of service and to spread that light and that khidmat. The one whom is continuous in khidmat is under the continuous rahmah of Allah When you stop your khidmat immense amount of rahmah has stopped and it creates an immense danger because then your life is just basically your life, you're going and doing whatever you do for dunya. That rahmah and that immense amount of rahmah is not there. So in these days of difficulty the continuous khidmat is our insurance policy. Amongst the many insurance policies that we have everything that Prophet brought for us is an immense insurance policy. We give our donations, we give our sadaqah, we do all of that for daily protection, for monthly protection. We, we do our khidmat and service on a daily basis for our protection and for an insurance policy against difficulties that are coming upon this earth. So immense, immense sort of blessings that Allah at every opportunity gives to us inshaAllah to stay protected and to stay blessed and for the hereafter and all the bounty of the hereafter inshaAllah. What we got for our audiences online inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. <coughs> uh, as Salaamu Alaikum respected Sayyidi. Wa Alaikum As Salaam Warahmatullahi Say if we have a family member who is not willing to take therapy for mental illness, what we as students of spirituality can we do to survive with peace in the family? <clears throat> yeah, the, the mental illness then that's something different. How to survive with your own, keep your own mental health around them and, and to keep your practices and then to keep your wudu and you know the, whatever you possibly can. But this discussion tonight was for those whom are actually students of the way and going all over the place. But how to deal with any sick person that everyone has to face in life is you know keep your wudu, keep your patience and if it's beyond your control keep your distance. So you have to be responsible. And, and everybody has to act uh, according because it's, it's mental illness can also be very dangerous where people begin to act out on, on their sort of delusions and illusions. 
So the, the, don't underestimate the need for someone's help and people have to get help. And when you know somebody's not well then you have to govern yourself accordingly and you have to take your precautions, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Dear Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Rahmatullah I've noticed a big change in energy disturbances especially with those of us that haven't been jabbed. Is there a way to combat this? No, I don't know if what you're, you're saying is relevant to only yourselves, it's not a statement of fact. So that in, in a particular person's energy they feel different and they haven't had their, their shot and what change in the energy, those are all different variables. The energy changes every month and this year entering into what we've described, so it's not again we've already talked about it. So if you've heard it you psychosomatically begin to feel it. So we describe that they're now about to proclaim something on this earth. So you hear that of course then now you're prepared for, for vibrational changes. And definitely each month its vibration will begin to change and the energies are changing and negativity is, is changing everywhere. Those whom did not receive things then they should feel much more secure. And those who did and had to be forcefully then if they were forced into it Allah made it to be like water. And they found out medically that actually that may have been true because if it wasn't refrigerated it just turned to jello and they just basically put it in and nothing was meant from it, nothing came from it. So you know when somebody is oppressed and under oppression Allah relieves His servant and protects them. The main point is that to seek protection in only Allah So alhamdulillah that each, each thing is something different is what I'm trying to say for. No doubt that anyone listening to us is going to be more cautious because you know it's, it's like a warning sign something on the horizon is in difficulty. So then everybody's a little bit more cautious. In that state of being cautious no doubt you're going to be more sensitive because they have belief, they hear and they believe. And at the same time every month has a different tajalli. So now this month is heavy tajalli of qamar which means reflective energy which Allah is reflecting on this state of qamar, qamarun that the sun is sending out an immense amount of transmissions to make people qamarun and to raise them, to dress them and to bless them. As a result you have to stay very firm and very tight on the rope so that they can achieve these lights. Otherwise this chaotic and mental state will just go all over the place until the person breaks away. So there's a tremendous amount of energies being released now to prepare people for the events that are coming. So hold tight, don't, don't tafaruq, don't let go of the rope, not at this stage inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam If we can't connect with Mawlana spiritually, is there a possibility our soul is already bonded to another soul or entity? Can we have given our soul away or can it be kidnapped and we not know about it? Kidnapped. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it's best for that situation, it's just the, the dhikr of Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel, ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal nasi, la hawla wa la quwwata illa bil nahyani wa That if Allah is inspiring you to listen to this teaching, listen to this shaykh, follow it, make your connection, don't go into your mind. So stay off your mind. And you trying to analyze who you are, where you are, what you think you achieved because we just now spoke for 40 minutes is that you're nothing. Say, I'm nothing, you achieve nothing because you're not supposed to be anything. So you meditate 
and meditate. I'm with the shaykh, I'm nothing, I'm dressing, Ya Rabbi I'm nothing, let me to do my awrad breathing in this state, visualizing my presence with the shaykh. It's not easy to visualize the shaykh, you're not at that station. And definitely very difficult to keep their arwa, keep their surah in their face. But the state was to be nothing, it was not to base myself on how I could see them, feel them and all of those things. Because if you're wanting that too much then that itself is a barrier to reaching. Anything that you want because Allah doesn't submit to you, it will actually draw you to be farther from your goal. So if you're following our teaching and you've followed in cycles of the whole year, you will have caught that in the secret of Sifat al-Sabr. That Nabi Mustafa and the dress of Prophet the chosen one opens the reality of sabr. And sabr its secret is to not want anything because then you'll be happy with everything. As soon as you want something it stays farther away from you, it's going away. So the secret they understood in spirituality was that I stopped asking for something, it was pushing me farther from that reality so that I would have sabr and then it became harder and harder. Why sabr is so hard? It's because you want something and it's not coming. If you didn't want it then the secret of sabr dressed you. When Allah dresses you with the secret of sabr, it's not that He's going to now make you wait long periods of time in enjoyment. The secret of sabr is you've taken from your heart anything you want and Allah makes it come to you very quick because you didn't want it, you didn't care, okay they're going to give it, not give it, I don't care. I continue with my ibadah, I continue with my practice, I continue what I have to be doing. And I try my best to do it and you're, you're gracefully and gratefully achieving because you're not making Allah to submit to your timeline, astaghfirullah. But I'm telling myself and Allah that, Ya Rabbi I don't want it, uh, it's not for me, I've given up the thought of it. And when the servant can truly achieve that then they've reached the reality of sabr. It's because then they don't want something, Allah dresses them then from these realities and these blessings inshaAllah. So this is a is immense state of, of realities in which to meditate, contemplate and, and don't, don't put any, any of these issues on the meditation that you've been sold to someone else, you own by something else or just… Yeah, just be nothing and you are exactly where Allah has inspired you to be because then it's assumption maybe then Allah was wrong. He put you here, made you just study there but you're supposed to be somewhere else. So it means that for everywhere Allah guides the student there must be something there for them. And so alhamdulillah with these types of realities that are not on every channel, on every place, these are again from the people of tafakkur, tafakkur when these are the people of contemplation. So those are not prevalent teachings. When Allah inspires a student then take from that oasis, sit there and achieve your reality inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum as wa rahmatullah. In the battle of fighting against the nafs, after one fights and overcomes certain characteristics, the next day the battle is even more difficult. Does the nafs get stronger and can it not be defeated? Of course it can never be defeated, just by one sitting you're not going to defeat your nafs. Look at what Prophet described, that don't leave me for blink of an eye. Why would you think that you could achieve that in, in one argument staying quiet? It's something that will never go away and uh, it definitely gets stronger because person may feel happy that they stayed quiet for a day or… So it's a continuous state of struggle and never to underestimate the, the nafs and its desire and 
That's why all the practices are continuous, they meditate, they do the awrad, they do the zikrs, they do all the practices, everything so that they can achieve these realities. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa uh, Sayyidi, I'm new to this path. Out of all your books, which one should I be reading first? The timeless reality, inshaAllah, for meditation and how to connect and all the, the two years of questions and answers for the meditation so that uh, you can familiarize yourself with the connection and how to connect and the easiest of them and the, the, to get the basic understandings because with that connection then all the other knowledges can begin to fall in place. The other ones are a bit more advanced on the heart, the levels of the heart, the realities of hijrah, the reality of the love of Prophet But first one to connect and to make the connection is important. Through that connection then all these realities can make sense and, and to to receive the reflection of those realities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam. There was also a question one second did, that was on the, the internet and emails is that people feel more and more disconnected and they go places and they don't feel a connection with places and we've spoken to that many times that once you take from these realities and your soul thrives from these realities, there's very few places that that soul can feel any sense of satisfaction. So it's not, it's not that it's a, it's a common well that it can drink everywhere from that reality. So the more that the soul is being satisfied, the more the person is correctly connecting and feeling the connection. The more energy that they're receiving, they're not able to achieve that everywhere else. So it's like a, a reality of that you're, you're be receiving this immense amount of gold. It's not like you can go to other places that are having copper and silver and somehow from them extract some gold. It's copper and silver. So you listen to a different uh, YouTube, it's like silver, I don't know what these people are talking about. I don't have the ability to even sit long enough to understand where is this person going with this discussion. Or you go in places and events and they hang out with different people and say, I don't, I don't feel, I feel so disassociated. It's not disassociation, it's just you realize in that, in that event if socializing and people getting together, it may not be a, an event of gold, it's not a worshipness and zikr and, and things that you're going to get any gold from it. So you feel an immense sense of a, a waste of time and, and a group of people whom are discussing things that have absolutely no benefit whatsoever. So then more and more spiritual people and we gave that talk last week, they learn how to be mutahireen or mutaqeen in which to be… have a consciousness and a taqwa on all their senses. Because they're trying to achieve, if they're trying to achieve and they keep wanting to open up their hearing but they're in like loud concerts and loud events all day long, Allah's going to ask them, why are you trying to achieve these things and you're here? So everyone to the degree in which they're trying to achieve, and why are you trying to open up your eyesight and you're, you're sitting in there? So everything has its own hikmah, so when the person and only they know how much they want their heart to open and they know where they're taking themselves, of course then, then those associations and those places may not be lending themselves for the best spiritual evolvement and evolving spiritually. So yeah then person feels ashamed that, ah oh, here these people are just talking rubbish, some of them even drinking and chatting and chitting and there's no, no value in it so I don't really belong here. And that's a natural state of somebody who's spiritually progressing. 
until they can reach and they reach and they reach and then they begin to carefully select where they're going to go and they go to places in which people are trying to perfect themselves and improve themselves. And that's, that's spiritually good, there's nothing wrong with that. There's no reason one should force themselves to be with inappropriate people and say, so, oh you've been… you've become so hard, you're, you just don't go here and there. I say, yeah but inappropriate people don't force themselves to come and sit in our zikr. Why is it that I have to force myself to sit with inappropriate people? So to each their own and then these oceans they, they sort of go in their direction. That one goes for there and this one goes for that. So that's a natural progression on the spiritual path is you want to be with spiritual people whom are trying to improve themselves. You know and the gold, it goes with the gold and begins to move towards the gold doesn't keep going into the lower associations and, and be, being lost in them inshaAllah. So that's a natural progression in spirituality is when you feel that you just don't belong in every place all the time, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, This was a question related to your video on riba. Uh, brother's asking, is it okay for him to use credit cards? <laughs> yeah, that's the one we, we were describing on the, on the riba. Uh, they're playing around with the definition of riba. And that's how these, these uh, other groups, these Wahhabi ideology, they're playing around what they call lost in translation. The riba, its translation is usury. So anywhere where there's an exorbitant fee that would entrap the person is very dangerous. So the actual real riba is credit cards, not a home mortgage, somebody waiting 30 years to get paid back 3%, that's, that's not even a good business or four percent whatever these people want to say the banking rate is on a, on a conventional home loan that's not usury. The real usury is the credit card which is twenty-five percent to thirty percent interest rate. And if you put ten or fifteen thousand and max your credit card before you know it you're paying nine hundred dollars a month just the interest and you can't even get out of that credit card. I mean you're just going to be paying nine hundred dollars a month just the interest rate and never paying down the credit card. And that's the danger that Prophet was giving to people. But you notice that the, the riba banks, the so, so, so called riba banks, how come they don't offer a halal credit card? <laughs> yeah, because it's just you know, just these people playing with, with Arabic words and translations. The mortgage is already available everywhere and it's not uh, usury. If they really want to do something great why don't they offer a credit card in which use our money and spend as you like and, and you pay us this and pay us that or make something more reasonable at 3%, 4% and call it ijarah and call it a rent. <laughs> but they don't offer these things so that the real danger is then the credit card not the mortgage, inshaAllah. Uh, as you can get a cash card, debit card. You can get an American Express where you pay every month your balance so there is no interest fee being charged. But the danger is when people can't control their credit and they spend what they don't have. Best to take your paycheck and use a debit card when you have to go out and get gas because you're not going to take cash everywhere and everything else cash your check and pay everywhere cash. That way you budget yourself and it's much harder to pay cash on something than a piece of plastic. Because by the time you start counting your notes and say, I'm going to give them this much cash, oh forget it, I'll just… I don't need to get it right now and they don't get it. But to give a piece of plastic and get a bill later then that can, can cause people to enter into difficulty. And those that have it they pay by debit card and they don't have any interest payments coming through inshaAllah. Say there's like four or five similar questions related to muraqaba. Um, these uh, sisters are asking, if they already are connecting to the shaykh through muraqaba, is it best now to 
focus on Hajj Amina? Yeah, Hajj Amina. Yeah. It's all the same that when you want to open up the connection and make that connection, focus on Hajj Amina, the very, very subtle energy, very beautific energy she has, very guiding energy, that way they can connect their heart and, and make a, a very strong connection and begin to feel a communication and uh, you know for, for a more feminine connection. And they all lead to the way of Prophet inshaAllah. And then for questions then related to the questions then they can ask uh, help me at nurmuhammad.com. And the most common question again for the, the female audience is during the cycle of a month in which they're not supposed to, to do and abstain, our spiritual recommendation is that you, whatever you have memorized you can continue because the people whom are hafiz they don't blank out their month because of a monthly cycle. So whatever is memorized you continue and anytime you're about to do spiritual practices make your wudu. Keep yourself continuously making wudu. Not that you will be in a state of wudu but you want to wash away negative energy that is collectively coming against somebody and making them to enter into difficulties. So water is water and water burns every type of shaitan. So whatever the negative energy is coming because as a result of that then they make their wudu to refresh their wudu every so often. If they're going to sit and to do some practices and recite from heart then again they make wudu and, and they recite from what's in their heart, they keep their awrad and uh, their da daily recitations from what they have within their heart not touching the Qur'an and not lif lifting anything from their hands. Whatever people have memorized then it's by memory, there's no… There's, you're not supposed to lose your mind every time. So whatever is memorized then keep the, the practices of what's memorized inshaAllah and always keep a state of wudu because water burns away negativity inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Is wanting good for family and friends part of worldly desires? Why would wanting good on family and friends? Wanting good for yourself is good. For dunya hasanat, you want good always to come. This is not worldly desires. Is when you sit and only, only want material things. That's worldly desires. Wanting khair and goodness is, is a part of faith. We don't want badness. So everything is about wanting goodness that Allah's be Rida, Allah be satisfied, la anta maqsudi wa ridat matloob, begging your forgiveness and asking your rida and satisfaction. So of course we want Allah's satisfaction in everything we do and we want Allah's satisfaction and forgiveness for all of our loved ones. Dunya is dunya, people have to understand, you know, dunya is when you excessively that's all you want, you want to sit in and keep asking for everything from the material world that's dunya. But to have goodness is, is a part of faith, we don't want badness to come, we don't want to be tested in, in difficulties, don't ask for tests, don't ask to be crushed, don't ask for anything because that, that's not something people can handle. Only want is that, Ya Rabbi make it to be easy for me, make it to be khair and to be good for me and if any difficulty is coming my way lessen it Ya Rabbi. By, by my sadaqah, my, my du'as and, and my good deeds and make everything to be easy and beautiful for me Ya Rabbi, not hard. Don't ask for anything hard, life is already hard enough inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzatan mi yasifu wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.